This country is, uh, I mean, it's addicting. I've invested a lot of my career and life in Helotrop. And so it's like anything, any passion, it's a passion to me. It's not just a job, never has been. And so I didn't go home at five o'clock in the afternoon and forget about work, you know, especially during that fire in 2012. I mean, I lived it 24 hours a day for a month and a half. Just like a fly fisherman or someone who loves the outdoors, you know, they don't, they don't quit loving it at five o'clock or after they come back from a trip, whether it's fishing trip or a backpacking trip. They, they think about it, they invest in it, they invest in their own money and time and they're gaining experience and knowledge. And it's, uh, you know, I, could, I can make all the arguments about a canary in the coal mine and, and the native trout in the Southwest are essentially, a, I mean, they're the quintessential of canary in the coal mine. And as they go, the Southwest goes. My first trip in, into the woods, into the Gila to work on Gila trout was in 1987. And at that time, you basically couldn't get into this country, this high country, until May. A place like this here were the first week of April, and there would have been four or five feet of snow on the ground. We wouldn't have been in here, not for another month. There's all this debate and disagreement about what is or isn't causing climate change, but the climate is changing. This place has dried out in the 30 years I've been working here like nobody's business. Last 10 years, a couple of good snow years, and by that I mean average snow years. But I've seen a year where the snowpack was 3% of the long-term average, and that's nothing. It's really important in this country is if you don't have snowpack that you have the monsoon season, the rains, and they, it tends to help rebuild the stream and keep, keep suitable habitat for adults so they stay alive. But um, We've had, you know, we've had fires here in the past, but uh, they've just getting progressively bigger and bigger. And so the 2012 Whitewater Baldy fire, a little over 300,000 acres, and the biggest, biggest that we've seen. On the fire alert tonight, wildfire burning in the Gila is on the verge of becoming the largest in state history. The Whitewater Baldy fire has now torched more than 152,000 acres, and by the end of the night, could grow to historic levels. The Whitewater Baldy fire started in early May. We had actually been in the high country into Spruce Creek to saw logs so that we could get pack strings in there to do, to do some inventory work on Spruce Creek heel trout and bring them out. And so a uh, biologist working for me and a guy from the Forest Service and I, we spent, we packed in there and spent three days clearing trails so we could get a lot of other people and gear in there. And this fire had just started and at that time it was uh, the Whitewater fire. So it wasn't, and then it joined with a Baldy fire and it became the biggest wildfire in history in New Mexico. And so we watched this thing burn the entire month of May. And um, I never felt so bad. We knew what was gonna happen. And so our strategy was to protect all these populations and replicate them in separate places and far enough apart that we wouldn't have to worry about a fire eliminating the replicate and the original. And this fire, where this fire burnt, it plopped right down in the center of the universe for Gila trout. And it affected every, every Gila trout stream but three. We're riding these trails and we're riding through country that I've been through for 30 years. And it's stark, the difference. I mean, the, the, every tree is burnt. And you have the occasional clump of trees here and there. I mean, it burned a mosaic like most fires do, but this had extensive areas of stand replacement fire that burned everything. The Gila trout is, is such a, an incredible story. Uh, you know, when I started fishing here 30 years ago, uh, all of the pure Gila trout streams were closed to fishing because trying to trying to recover those populations that had been had been lost, and so I really at that time you know dreamed about the having the opportunity to fish for this special native trout. They're just amazing little fish. They're unique. They represent the Southwest. They represent New Mexico, Arizona. The work that we do here in New Mexico and Arizona for Gila trout, which is uh, the only place in the country where 
they occur. It's a restoration or recovery program. They are listed under the Endangered Species Act as uh, threatened. They were listed on the original Endangered Species Act in 1973 as endangered and then downlisted in 2006 to threatened. Every single recovery action, everything we do, all the agencies are involved in, in those and what we do, we all have different resources and different expertise that we can bring to the table. And I absolutely think that the success that we've seen with Gila Trout is because we have those good partnerships. Everyone's working towards the same goals and you, we need each other. In the near term, Gila Trout are gonna be the trout that's here when things really start getting tough. And if, and if people want to support trout habitat and, and trout fishing, Gila Trout's as good as a candidate as any.